So today we're going to take our undistorted plate that we did in the previous chapter and bring it into Maya and match the camera to the plate. So we're going to take the physical camera that was shot and make it a digital virtual camera. Now map painters rarely ever, ever, ever do this, but it's great to know. Now I learned how to do this through working at smaller studios earlier in my career. Um, I had layout artists show me how to do this. This is why it's great to work at smaller studios or boutiques because you're kind of forced to learn other skills as well. Uh, so you become that well-rounded generalist artist. Now, map painter as a generalist is the best thing. It's also helpful, even if you're a concept artist, to be able to put some 3D assets into 3D. And sometimes you'll have the emergency where you don't get the virtual camera. Um, so you have to make one yourself. You know, a lot of things like this happen. You'd be surprised. Now, be sure to subscribe and follow so you can keep up with the next chapters that are going to be coming out in the future, like you see on the screen here. And so let's get into this. So let's talk about how I was able to match the matte painting to the plate. And now I was able to get the geo to line up with the perspective and distortion of the camera. So I actually had to go in there and match my undistorted plate and create a virtual camera that imitated the real world camera. So right here, I'm actually looking through the camera that I ended up rendering. So as you can see, I had some, this is only some of the geo. I was able to create, let's say this is the wall. I was able to create that and it was able to go into, pers into the distance in the correct perspective. And you can see like if you look at this, this high, the mid-ground. If you see this, look at that, look at that geo, that light over there and look how this angles over here and in fact let me hide this i had another image plant real quick uh, so if you look at this light it's angled very extreme like that because the lens distortion is happening at least part of it the lens distortion and then it can kind of slip back into place there if you pay attention to this line over here and this list back over there and switches angles. And it's the same thing with the pieces, the buildings over here, I was able to use to help match, or help guide me to match the lighting on the set. I'll go over that later. But you can tell if I push it behind the camera, the perspective of the building changes too, the angles. So I can push the build this as far as back as possible and it'll match the real world look. Um, so that's why I was able to build the sets behind further and further back and the angles were all lining up. And that all has to do with the type of lens. So the type of lens I had was a focal length of 16. So you always want to get the focal length from the studios. Uh, usually, you don't really have to do calculations. It's depending on if you have a, a cropped sensor in your camera or not, because you will be getting those cameras from the studio or which the tracker or layout guy makes. So you, know, you want to have to really worry about that. In my case, I had actually, since I, I, it took me a while and I realized, oh, I'm working with a crop sensor and the focal length calculations are actually slightly different. The website's red camera actually has a section that read, uh, on the website that lets you figure out the calculations for that. But I'm not going to go over that right now. So let's talk about how I was able to line up the camera and what you do. Let's go to the perspective. And that's the real camera. So I made a tutorial camera over here. The first thing that you want to do is make that camera, right? And let's... Bring it back down. Let me fix, change this real quick. So when it comes in, it comes in like this at zero zero. Let me switch this. Um, actually, let's just make a new camera real quick. You go to panels, perspective, new camera. Okay, it comes in all weird and wonky. So you just zero out everything. So it's at the origin. So there you go. And then what you do is you tear off a copy of it, so you know where that camera is moving. So I have this. So now I can work on the perspective and look at the camera, what it's doing at the same time. So this camera will actually be called, uh, we can name it right here, Tutorial 2. So the first thing that you want to do, if you, as you can see, it's really small. This is, you know, we're working real, real world scale. So I have this six foot man over here and the camera comes in really small. So we'll have to make it larger. Now, you know, you could, you think, you okay, let's press R to, Get the scale feature up and make it bigger like that. No, you don't want to do that because you, you risk the chance of breaking the camera. So you want to actually go into the attributes of the camera and over here on the right side, attribute editor, and it'll be up here starting and you scroll down and you go to object display. Okay, you want to open it up. You want to go to locator scale and this will scale up the camera. Let's do a 100, whatever number you want. And that will scale it up without 
risking any damage or any other weird things that go on through the pipeline and all that stuff. So if you want to scale the camera, do it through the locator scale, okay? So now the next thing that you want to do is group it because if you don't group it and you're trying to rotate it and match the, the plate, you're going to be using all the rotation features and not break it up and it just becomes not an easy thing to do when you're just messing with the camera. So what you want to do is actually group it, okay? And use group camera translate uh, rotation. Okay? So that's going to be, your group is going to be used for the rotation and the camera uh, is only going to be moved by the translation. So when you move it, oops, let's select the camera. When you move it back and left or wherever you want it to go, the pivot point of the group is still going to be back here. So you can either leave it at zero, zero and rotate it like this and try to match it that way. Or you can find a specific object in the scene and move that pivot point to a corner of that object. Okay. So, because then it starts rotating around there. So to move the pivot, you press D, you can press V for the verts. So if I was to right click on this, right click on this and you see the verts, those are the verts, um, vertexes, vertices whatever. So let's select the group again. You press D to move it and then you press V so it snaps to the verts, the vertices. You see how it's just going to the corners. And then you press D again so you're back out of moving that around. So when I select the camera, pivot points at the camera, which is actually at the zero, zero point of the camera. It's the same thing as, what, as if it was on the nodal like we talked about before. And then if you can look at that, the pivot point of the group itself is still at the point of that object. So now you're actually rotating around that specific object. Now, if you want to match it to the plate, you have to, if you see here, since we're looking through the camera here, we actually want to put an image plane in there. So you go to view and the import image. This will be a frame out of your sequence that you want. So I have one here that is already undistorted with some overscan on, which we will talk about later. And you want to select here for the resolution gate and blocks it out. So this is all you're seeing here. This is what you will see in your renders. As you can see here, the image plane is really small. So you won't be able to see these objects in this view because they're not in front of this image plane. So if I deselect it, you can select it again and you can go to the channel box and go to the depth and push it to say 1000. And that pushes it all the way back to here. And now instantly you can see the geo and to help line it up. So that's just moving it away from the camera. So you can actually use it to work. And you can select your geo in there as well. So let's go put this camera back to zero. Okay. And let's just put that back to center pivot. So if you go to modify center pivot, it's back to there. So anyway, let's try to do a quick lineup. I'm not going to make it perfect. I already know what where I had figured it out. You, you have to first start thinking about, okay, this is in real world scale. Where did he shoot the camera? Okay, where was he at this on set shooting this camera? Was the camera high? Was it low? Or whatever. Was it angling up? So I bring it, I brought in the six foot man. And this is basically as a guide to kind of start building a set in real world scale. So this wall, this wall over here is, as you can tell, it's way bigger than these people here. So I built a, a wall behind him that, in our case, is way bigger than him. And you also don't want to really rotate the wall. So when I brought that in, it came in as, you know, at the origin of the, the grid over here, zero, zero. So let me just undo that and build a block over here. As you can see over here, it's right in the sensor. So let's move the pivot point press D and then you have these features that is highlighting the face and just click that face and push it back to there and you want to bring the bottom of the cube back to the ground so you know that everything's going to be at the ground so you press the middle press X to snap to the grid not V but X and then now you know that's at the grid at I mean that's touching the ground so now if you look at this it's still too small right so now I have a, a basically a reference point to move that around and scale it up now that we have that there like what we were saying before, we know the camera is probably around the guy's head, right? So we're moving the camera with the translation, like we were talking about earlier, just the translation. And and then I put the pivot point, since we're going to use this object as basically a guide to try to match that wall that we have over there. So I'm going to take this pivot point, press D for the group, and then put it to, press V to snap it to here at that corner. So 
what we have here is that we can now rotate this object around by that point. You see how it's rotating by just that? Ooh, by that. That's what we want. So yeah, let's undo that rotation. So as we can tell, you might want to move it back a little because you think about the scale here. You probably also want to get this a little bit little higher. It's just, you're, you're just eyeballing it basically. So I know that this camera ended up being around here. Oh wait, I didn't change the focal length. Well, first things first, let's start that again over here. We have to, I have to copy the focal length of my render camera or all the information that I created from it. So let's just copy all this stuff into here. I'm just gonna do this real quick. So now we have that all matching up. Let's line that up again. Keep this up here. And we know the camera on this camera scenes. We can actually take this person over here and duplicate just as a reference to see where it is. So the camera's obviously too high. And we can push them down since that's probably what where they were shooting it in, in the real world. And then, get rid of them. And then move the group. Rotate it around here. Move the camera forward. See that image plane is intersecting with one of my older image planes. So let's actually hide that for now. That's from that is coming from my actual rendered camera. So let's hide that as intersecting. So as you can tell, in this camera, he's kind of looking up with it, right? So if you just press F on the camera, so you know where it's hitting. So before it was part, it was like this. So these objects are high, right? So I'm thinking, okay, it's he's looking up instead of down. So let's actually look up at this point, and you can tell that now it's lining up. Okay. So this is the things that you just have to think it pragmatically, like just as if you're there and think like, how was he setting up that camera? How, how, what is he? What angle is that camera at? So now, if I was to move this object around, it's all going to line up. You can see this lines up perfectly with that angle over there, and that lines up over there, and that lines up over there. And go bring that up high and we're all happy and we can I could just build whatever I want and now because I have that I was actually able to pretend okay these buildings over here are behind the person that's behind the camera so I was actually able to take geo so let's duplicate this real quick and move it behind me and take the birds and, move, and build it essentially trying to pretend that the building right it becomes really powerful when you actually rebuild it into your computer because you can just do whatever you want and it should be able to match really well. Because, uh, because uh, matching up perspectives is, is the hardest part and this makes it a lot easier. It's the beauty of CG. Now, if you had to actually export out the animated camera, so maybe you made your own track camera and you're placing it in the right area and you didn't get from layout, which is not usually the case when you're in the studio, things get kind of wonky. So if you were to have this animated camera, and then if you were to just export that out, when you bring it to Nuke, it often is in another location because we're moving things based off these group transformations and not so much on the camera itself. So you can't export a group, right? So what you would have to do is actually take the animated camera, duplicate it, unparent it, so put it out of the group by pressing Shift P. So now it's outside of it. Let's drag it up on top. And then you'll select this camera and then that camera and let's just, let me show you. So when I duplicate that camera, it sticks it to that frame, right? It's not animated anymore. So we have to get this animation, this animation back onto this animation. So when you do, um, I believe it's, uh, this one's selected first, and then the animated camera selected second. Uh, and then you go to animation up here and you go to parent constraint. One way to test that it's actually working is hide these other cameras. So we have this one, right? So this one has no animation. So if you 
go to this frame to so make it obvious. We want to parent this camera to this camera. So when you parent it, it will pop into place with this camera. So if it actually works, you'll see it move. Because I always forget to select this one first or this one first. So we'll then select this one first and this one for the second. So the animation will second to see. And then you hit parent. Oh, oh, where is it? There we go. Let me try that again. Select this one, select that one. Go to the options of parents. Make sure maintain offset is off and apply. So that was the wrong order. <laughs> so we actually wanted this one to pop in this place. So that means we have to select the animated camera first and then the duplicated camera second and then press apply. And now you see they're the same and they will now move together. So when you, and if you hit this check plus box over here, you'll see this saying that there's a constraint to it. So you, now you select the camera, the new duplicated camera. Let's just name this dupe okay and then you do it still doesn't have animated keys right it's only moving because it's attached to the animated keys so now we have to bake the sim so we go to edit keys bake simulation and you'll see it's going through the timeline and you'll see this camera animated okay and now when you select this it has the animated keys here all right cool and then even if you delete that constraint, you'll still see this is animated. And then you can go to your cache, Alembic cache, and export selection to Alembic options. And you do the time slider, however many frames you want, export it. And so that will, if you select time slider, that will export the whole simulation. And that is it, and that should work.